Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm here with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out the Smart EQ Plus by Sonable. This is a pretty sweet unit. Essentially what this thing is, is an automatic EQ preset maker for whatever you have it applied to. Now let me explain what that means. It's an EQ. As you can see here, it's got multiple bands. But four of these bands, these ones right here with the little magic wand, actually analyze incoming audio. And depending on what type of audio that is, it makes EQ curves for you. So you can see down here, this green line is the EQ curve that it has applied to the signal based on the incoming audio. Now I have it right now on this acapella. Which way will I take? So it actually listened to that, and what I did was I put it on speech. There are two different modes down here. Standard will be like your instrument stuff, and speech is going to be like your dialogue, you know, film projects or interviews or stuff like that. And I guess uh, for vocals as well, although it's a little bit different between, you know, regular speech and singing. You know, what I would suggest if you have it on a vocal, just to go ahead and flip back and forth, you can change it. Do you see what happened here? If I went to standard, it gave me a bigger boost in the lower end. If I go to speech, a uh, speech, it actually doesn't give me as big of a boost. I mean, I can still boost it by pulling up here, but it's a little bit of a different EQ curve. But I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. Let's run through the GUI real quick and then throw this bad boy on a couple of different instruments to see what it does. So up here at the top, we've got our, you know, go backward, go forward type buttons. We got an A, B, so we can have two different uh, EQ curves loaded at the same time. We can go back and forth between them. We can copy one setting to the other if we wanted to. I don't have any presets loaded right here, but we can save our own if we wanted to. And here's just a different view. Here are our knob view if we want to, don't want to see the actual EQ curves here inside of the spectrum. Uh, there's a bypass button, clear solo, which if you have any of these bands soloed by clicking the S, you can just clear quickly by hitting this button that way you don't have to find where what is solo and what's not flat it's just going to go back to the flat rate reset it's going to go back to the very beginning if I hit yes now we're back to the default as I was saying before we have a number of different bands here these all work the same way they do in any other EQ I've got my decibel control, my frequency location, the Q value. And what's really cool about these four in the middle is if I hit this wand, like I said before, it will analyze the audio and then apply the curve. So right now, let me turn this back on. Uh, you can also turn them off and turn them on right here by clicking this, just a side note. So here I am and I've got, uh, right now the green line is the EQ curve. So I'm just adjusting it as you would on like the EQ8 inside of Ableton Live, for example. But watch what happens if I click this and then play the audio. Which way will I take? Which road will bring me back to home? A thousand pathways so far from where I wanna be. Just so you can see that now it's a check mark. Before it was a pause button, but now it's a check mark. That means it's done analyzing, and this is the EQ curve it suggests. Now we don't have a decibel level anymore. Here's the decibel, you see that? Now I have a percentage, so I can just decide how much of the EQ curve to apply to the signal. So if I go to 100%, you know, look at, it's going to get really big. And I'm zoomed in to 12 decibel, but here we can go out to uh, 24. So if we go up to 100, you can see how big of a boost that is. Which way will I take? And if I go to, I can switch to speech at any time and it's going to give me the EQ curve for speech. Which way will I take? And we still have control over like the Q value. We also have control over where the frequency is. It's what it's done is made an EQ curve for the entire spectrum and then we can just decide which part of that EQ curve we want to apply to the signal. So we do have more control than just letting it analyze and giving us an EQ curve. There's also a smoothing amount. You can see that it's making the points of the frequency that it analyzed a lot smoother over time here or over the frequency spectrum. Here it's pretty rigid. You can see right here there's a lot of dips, but right here it's a lot smoother. But uh, let's go ahead and run some other ones and let the vocal play and we'll see what happens. So if I do something like this let's say and then run it which way will i take which road will bring me back to home my thousand pathways so far from where i want to be Just so, far from, so far from so far from so far so you can see that this is already a pretty well EQ'd vocal. Uh, we can go negative values. As you can see here, it's kind of inverting the uh, frequency spectrum or the frequency line that we have. We can invert it if we wanted to. So we do have a lot of control over it. And I think 
almost always the result sounds better. Let's try it on some other instruments just to see what it sounds like. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that from that vocal. Let's find strings. Drop the smart EQ on it. And you can see uh, it's kind of smaller right now and that it does have a resizable GUI. So I can just click this corner and drag out until I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and run it and just hit three of these. So the difference there is quite subtle, but it is noticeable, especially in the lower end. So very, very nice effect there. And again, we can apply as much as that as we want to to the sound. So we have a bunch of controls. And I think, like I said before, it usually always sounds better. Let's put it on something else. Let's put it on a bass. Solo the channel. Put it on. Let's again leave it on standard and just run three of the frequency nodes. So for example here, it's kind of rolling off the low end, like the subby end, and I don't want that. So what I might do with this EQ curve is just flip it, right? You see what I'm saying? It always sounds better. It's just really finding what needs to be tweaked and then allowing you to either take that part away or put it, you know, add to that frequency band. So it's really making things sound better every time. It made the strings sound better, makes the bass sound better, makes the vocals sound better. And again, these are already pretty well EQ'd audio stems inside of this project. If you have something that isn't well EQ'd, this is definitely gonna help you out, speed up your workflow, and get you really great results. So anyway, that's a quick look at the Smart EQ Plus by Sonable. Joshua Casper here for Plug Boutique. I hope you learned something. Links in the description of this video. We'll see you next time.